Hi, welcome back to video 4, this is Fox Triple Eight. Now, uh, last time left off, uh, we just made a script real quick and we just added it to the ship. The only two variables so far is just move speed and rotate speed. Uh, now to set up the ship, you want to make you want to add some components to it. So make sure you click on your ship, go to component, go to physics, and add a box collider. Now if I press F to frame on my ship, the box collider is a little bit too small. I'm used to 3.4, so I, to adjust the collider real quick, I can actually hold shift, and I will see these little dots. And I can just click on one of them, and I can just drag them out. Now, or you can just use this if you're using an older version. Then to adjust very well, if I want to make sure I'm adjust, uh, you know, make sure I'm on the right view, I can just click in here, just like the little compass type thing. I can just click on the Y, then adjust that right there, and click here, drag that back here. Now for the size from left to right, double with the X, just increase it a little bit, like that. Click on my Q here and drag it up more just like that don't worry about the the little wings eventually later on we can add more colliders to it you don't have to add one collider that's a way of doing that and then after you do that you can just go ahead make sure you still click on your ship component physics rigid body okay. now this one <laughs> I mean now when you finally add the rigid body now this thing will use physics first thing is going to happen when you hit play right away, your ship is going to fall straight down because we don't have anything to collide with. In this case, we had a plane, but we turn it off for now. Eventually, later on, there's going to be a reason why that plane is there. I just didn't want to explain it right now. So make sure gravity, use gravity, is checked off because we're making a space game um, where it says constraints. Now, uh, constraint is just like it says, it, const it constrains the game object into uh, whatever you put it up to. Oops. In this case, uh, I'm just click on Y. So that way, whenever you move, it won't go up and down on the Y axis, which is first position Y. And then first rotation, we're going to do X and Z. That way, the ship won't randomly rotate this way, like that, or rotate like that. <clears throat> so the only rotate it has is just going like this, which is only in the Y. So make sure you have that. Now go ahead, click on your asteroid frame on it, component, physics, we're going to add this time a sphere collider, it's going to ask you, listen prefab, yes of course, uh, that's because it's coming from the import, imported uh, thing, don't worry about that, uh, up, make the radius a little bigger, so it kind of covers your little asteroid, now, how come I'm adding uh, collider and I didn't click on generate colliders, well if I hit generate colliders, yes it's going to collide, but we can't register it on the game with a function like on collider head, on trigger enter. It won't register. If you do, if you click here on the import settings, click on the asteroid or the ship, and then you click on generate colliders, that's for like a level stuff. That's like the ground, a building, something that is not gonna be not going to be moving around. So that's one thing that kind of sucks. I can't collide with the mesh perfectly around, so I have to add a collider to it. Make sure you go to component, physics, and rigid body. Yes, put a rigid body on it. Freeze position on the Y only. Don't worry about the rotation. Just let it rotate everywhere it wants to. Make sure the gravity is turned off. And then now we're ready uh, to start coding something on the ship. And then the asteroid. So go ahead, open up your move script real quick. And this time instead of closing it, I'm just going to minimize it. We got move speed and we got rotate speed. Uh, that's going to be what it's going to be using. So inside the update, now there's uh, there's things that we're doing here for checking flow of the program, and those are called if, else if, and else statements, or people just say if and else statements. Uh, inside the if statements, you're going to put a condition. It has to be a boolean, meaning as true or false, and then if it's true, then do this. If it's not, so on and so forth. So this is how you write it. You write if open parentheses. In this case we're gonna do the keyboard stuff. So just do input dot get axis. I just hit enter so I didn't have to type all that. Open parentheses open quotation marks 
and then do vertical make sure it's capitalized close parenthesis for that one and then close another parenthesis because we have a node one out here and then just hit enter open bracket enter close bracket go up and then hit enter just like that so if input dot get access vertical now it's going to give you error if you, if you put it on like that so in here after that we're going to say if it's more than dot zero two now when you do a decimal inside C sharp if you actually put the dot you have to put the F at the end saying that it's a float okay if you then put the F it's going to give you an error so up here what says must be yes I'm writing a float bar I'm making a float variable it says 50 now I didn't put a dot in there for decimal now if I put dot like let's say 5 I have to put the F at the end or else you're going to have an error just remember that and then uh, okay, so this means if input dot get access vertical. Now what the heck is vertical? I'll teach I'll show you that right now. So just click up here, go to edit, go to project settings and click on input. On the right side it's gonna show you input. This is where I'm getting the word vertical from. You're gonna see the word vertical and then it says name, descriptive name. So negative button just means down, positive button is up, this is this is saying the keyword keys. Alternative negative it just means S and then the other one is W. The rest of the settings, uh, don't even worry about it right now. We can probably mess with it later on. So that's what it means. So in here, you can actually make your own button. And just na uh, in here, you just name it vertical. So you can just go hit for size, just hit 18 for another size. You see, you just add it right here. So I can just be name inventory. Hit enter. Then positive button. Let's see B, like in bag. So now I can just go in my script and say if input dot get button down B. Now axis is it's pretty much looking for two numbers. So if I press up, it's gonna register as one. If I press down, it's gonna register as negative one. If I let go, it's just gonna be zero. So that's why here it says more than dot zero two f. Now the only reason why I didn't put one because it's gonna take a while to get to actually start moving or start registering that you're pressing forward. So that's one kind of drawback. So I put it kind of close to zero. Have a nice one. <laughs>